The very first character that we come across in Elden Ring is our trusty mount, the spectral steed, Torrent. Throughout the game, Torrent is our one constant companion, almost always just a whistle away. Obviously, this is impactful because it opens up one of Elden Ring's central new innovations, mounted gameplay and quick traversal through the new open world system. But Torrent also highlights a new story element, the fact that we have a companion who is always with us. Melina serves a similar role, but we can only interact with her at certain times, and at others she fully leaves us. All throughout our journey, Torrent is there, but we get very little information about who or what Torrent is besides a ghost horse with demon horns. So in this video, I want to explore the lore and everything we can learn about Torrent, the spectral steed. As I said, Torrent is the first real character we interact with, and paying close attention to this opening cutscene will begin to reveal some deeper truths. In it, we see Torrent approach us and sniff us, and Melina speaks in direct response to his snorts. Don't worry, Torrent. Fortune is on his side. We found him here, after all. One of his kind is sure to seek the Elden Ring, even if it does violate the Golden Order. We see here that Torrent has expressed some idea or emotion, likely some form of concern that we are seemingly dead or at the least unlucky. As we look at more evidence, we will see that this is just the start of Torrent displaying preference and some kind of set of his own motives. In this opening, it seems that he is aligned with Melina in the hope that we as Tarnished will be able to seek the Elden Ring, and even violate the Golden Order. The next display of Torrent's will comes in our next meeting with Melina. When she introduces herself to us, Melina offers us an accord and pairs us up with Torrent. In doing so, she says, I bequeath to you this ring. Use it to traverse great distances. It will summon a spectral steed named Torrent. Torrent has chosen you. Treat him with respect. Here we see Melina offer us an accord or contract but it is important to note that Torrent wasn't simply a tool given to us as part of that contract. Melina says that Torrent chose us, that the horse made an active decision in favor of us. And we hear this again the next time we see Melina, where she says, Forgive me. I've been testing you to see whether or not Grace truly does guide you, and whether you are fit to face the challenge that entails. It seems my worries were unfounded. Torrent had your measure from the very start, whereas I merely pretended. That Only after this does Melina take us to the round table hold. So Melina was unsure about us and whether or not we were actually being guided by Grace, which is fair since most other tarnished in the lands between have lost the ability to see the Grace's guidance. But unlike Melina, Torrent had picked us right from the start. And maybe Torrent doesn't have a complex mind where he is wary enough to test us in this way, but in any case he knew we were the real deal and chose us as such. In being a companion of Melina and aiding us on our journey to ostensibly help her, it seems that Torrent is choosing what will progress the plan Melina has in mind. But to learn more about the background of Torrent and his potential motivations, there is another character we have to look at. The only other character in the game that explicitly mentions Torrent and who happens to be theorized as having quite a range of possible connections with Melina. This character is Ronnie the Witch, or as she first appears to us, Rena. After we first receive Torrent from Melina, we can return to the Church of Ella, and Ronnie will appear using the name Rena. And if we attack her, she confirms what we have previously heard. Torrent hath quite the ruffian chosen. Here again is the idea that Torrent made a decision and chose us further showing some kind of will and intent on his part. If we actually speak to Ronnie Renna, she reveals some more Torrent-related info. I'd heard tell of a tarnished hurtling about atop a spectral steed, and upon looking into the matter, the talk, I surmise, is of thee. Thou art possessed of the power, no? To call forth a spectral steed named Torrent. Ah, as I had hoped, 
I was entrusted this for thee, by Torrent's former master. Tis a bell for calling forth spirits. Summon them with it. From ash and return to the Ur tree, the spirits will obey thine command but briefly. As they recall battles past, now it is thine to do with as thou wishest. Through some acquaintance with Torrent's former master, Ronnie is aware of the spectral steed to the point where she recognizes him when just hearing some gossip about a creature like him, a spectral horse that can pop in and out of existence. This dialogue also opens up a can of worms about Torrent's history and identity. The item Ronnie gives us, the spirit calling bell, tells us a little about spirits in general, saying, a bell capable of summoning various spirits from ashen remains. Spirits can only be summoned in the vicinity of a rebirth monument. So if Torrent is a spirit, then his summoning may have some connection with ashen remains. But we know he isn't subject to the same restrictions as the other ashen spirits, so this reasoning probably won't lead us much farther. Another aspect we learn from Rani is that she knew Torrent's former master, and she knew this master well enough to be entrusted with the responsibility of giving the spirit calling tool to whomever Torrent chose. Again, we see action happening premised on the fact that Torrent is an active agent, but unfortunately there does not seem to be any conclusive evidence about who or what this former master was. There are a few potential theories on who it could be. First is the snowy crone who we learn about from the Snow Witch set, whose hat reads, Witch's pointed hat, frigid and frozen through, of a style associated with practitioners of heretical sorcery, strengthens cold sorcery, once worn by the snowy crone who the young Ronnie encountered deep in the woods. She was a witch and well versed in cold sorceries. It is said that the doll that houses Ronnie's soul was modeled after her. That old witch was Ronnie's secret mentor. For a recap, Rani is the daughter of Renala and Radagon, and was or is an Empyrean, which is someone who has the potential to be the next god after Merica. Rani wasn't about that life, so she killed her body on the Night of the Black Knives and put her soul into the doll we see her in. This doll is wearing the Snow Witch set that was worn by Rani's old mentor, the Snowy Crone, and it is modeled after her. The set is found in Rena's Rise, so perhaps Rena was the name of the Snowy Crone. This theory could be supported by the fact that it seems that Ronnie had a close relationship with Torrent. When we meet Ronnie for the second time, she almost immediately mentions Torrent, saying, Oh, again we cross paths. I believe I said my name was Rena when last we met. It pleaseth me to see Torrent hale and hearty. And towards the end half of her quest, Ronnie again remarks on Torrent. My thanks for thy sterling efforts. A strange gift, perhaps. But a rare sort such as thee would welcome it, I'm sure. I am certain now. Fate steered us to our first encounter. I must thank Torrent, too, for his part. Again, we see Torrent being treated with agency. Ronnie saying how she must thank him for his part in helping us help her. And if Ronnie has this significant of a relationship with Torrent, it stands to reason that she was around him to some degree when he was in the charge of his former master. If that master was Ronnie's mentor, that would give them ample opportunity to spend time together. Another candidate for this old master is a bit more obscure. It's a theory I'd heard about first on the Elden Ring Discord, by a user, JC Rex which is similar to what we've stated so far, but goes on to say that Ronnie's mentor and Torrent's former master is not Rena, but one called Chilona. The name Chilona, or Kilona, or Kelona, I don't know how to pronounce it, comes from a rise present on the Moonlight Altar Plateau. This rise has the player find three gargantuan turtle or tortoise aberrations as its puzzle, which makes sense when you learn that Chelonoidus, or Kelonoidus, is the name for a genus of tortoises. The name comes from the ancient Greek word Chelone, or Chelone, or Chelone, or Chelone, or Chelone, I don't know, which means tortoise. The crux of this theory is the fact that Chelona's rise is where we find Rani's dark moon sorcery. It reads, The moon was encountered by a young Rani, led by the hand of her mother, Renala. What she beheld was cold, dark, and veiled in occult mystery. While it does reference Renala, the placement of the spell so intimate to Rani here in this rise does give grounds for a strong connection between Rani and Chinola. 
Also supporting this theory is the presence of the Wraith Callers near the Rise. These are four-armed beings with pale skin, not completely unlike the four-armed doll that Ronnie inhabits. They also wield the Wraith Calling Bell, whose description reads, Ring Bell using FP to summon Prowling Wraiths. This can be done multiple times in a row. Wraiths are said to be the vengeful spirits of those who died when cursed. This has obvious parallels to the Spirit Calling Bell, which Ronnie gives us in our first meeting. This one just summons wraiths instead of ashen spirits. Perhaps these are both a kind of being different yet similar to the kind of spirit Torrent is. There's also one more piece of compelling evidence here. That is the fact that wraith callers occasionally ride horses themselves. We can find an example of this in Lyurnia, and it's hard for me to not concede that this horse does bear a bit of similarity to Torrent with its distinct jump. Though, to be fair, there really aren't many other horses in general around. So maybe it's a reach, but maybe the fact that there aren't that many horses means we should take a second look at the connections between the horses that do exist. Though I'll be spending plenty of time comparing similarities of horse-like beings later on in this video. I'll conclude this section about Torrent's potential former master by just mentioning a final candidacy. There is a lot of lore we don't know about Ronnie, and even more that we don't know about Melina. Because of this, and the fact that these are two of the most unique characters in the game, who happen to bear a share of similarities to each other, there are tons of theories about their potential linkage. Are Ronnie and Melina two parts of one being? Is Melina Ronnie? Do they share some other connection? All this to say, maybe Melina is Torrent's former master. She is the one who gives us his whistle after all. And she's the only person other than Ronnie to mention Torrent by name. And remember how Ronnie remarked that she had to thank Torrent too? I must thank Torrent too. Well, listen to this bit of dialogue from Melina. We're almost there. The flame of ruin lies just ahead. I'm glad it was you I traveled with. I must tender my thanks to Torrent too. Thank you, Torrent. Please continue to lend your aid. Till the end. This is another point of agency for Torrent, but it's also nearly the exact same thing as what Ronnie said, except Melina actually explicitly says her thanks to Torrent. Is this evidence that Ronnie and Melina are the same being? I don't know. Does this mean that Melina is Torrent's former master? Maybe, but it's still not conclusive. Melina surely knew Torrent well, but it seems we have hit a dead end when it comes to determine the specifics of these relationships unless someone has a really convincing piece of evidence to establish what Ronnie and Melina are to each other, or who Ronnie's mentor for sure was. So now that we've explored these avenues of Torrent's history, there is one more place we must turn to to learn what Torrent truly is. We must look below. The Siofra River, I don't actually know how you pronounce Siofra. Editing Mad chiming in here to say that it is Shofra River, according to my Irish friend. The ancestral followers, and most of all, to the regal ancestor. This area is one of the only in the game where the Erd Tree is not present. We know that this separation is significant because the Regal Ancestor's Remembrance reads, Ancestral spirits exist as a phenomenon beyond the purview of the Erd Tree. Life sprouts from death as it does from birth. Such is the way of the living. Here we get insight into how these spirits are a unique phenomenon of life that exists independently from the Erd Tree and likely the whole Golden Order and Greater Will. This could provide some idea of what kind of being Torn is, as we know he is a spirit of some kind, but seemingly distinct from other spirits like Ashen Spirits and Wraiths. There is also the Great Horned Headband of the Ancestral Followers. Not many things in game really look like Torn's horns, but these come pretty close, hinting at some connection. And if we really want to see some equestrian similarities, we need to look at my favorite boss in the game, the Regal Ancestor. Yes, it isn't a mechanically complex fight, but the mood and arena and soundtrack are all just so encapturing to me. I love it. But onto the point of the video, this boss is immediately similar to Torrent by being both an ungulate and a spirit being. And what really sells the story is the fact that the ancestor has a triple jump, which looks exactly like an evolved version of our Torrent's double jump. It even has the same blue platform animation and sound. which really makes it hard to say that there isn't a connection here. And here I want to note that while I do think I made this connection myself, I'm not sure how much I'm discerning just throughout this whole process as a silo versus through my interactions with Discord and Reddit. 
so I just want to shout out the Elden Ring Discord servers and the Reddit as potentially great places for discussion. I'll link to them in the description, including one particularly insightful Reddit post from a user Crayola Clock. So, Torrent is likely some kind of ancestor spirit or spirit like them. Maybe he would become something like the regal ancestor with age, eventually learning how to take his double jump to the next level. Reading the description for the ancestral spirit's horn provides more context. A number of new growths bud from the antler-like horns of the fallen king, each glowing with light. Thus does new life grow from death, and from death one obtains power. So the ancestral spirits are all about the cycle of life and death and they seem to exist in some interesting space partially dead and partially alive, which fits with the body of the boss being some sort of spirit-imbued carcass. Now we have most of the information on Torrent laid out. Well, all that and the fact that he likes raisins. We really don't have definite conclusions to pull, but some speculation can let us say something. Torrent is likely a spirit like the Ancestrals, maybe somewhere on their plane of existence is where he resides in between summons by us. And I've somehow managed to go this whole video without reading the description for his whistle, so I need to point out that it says, A delicate goldwork ring can be used as a finger whistle. Sound the whistle to summon and ride Torrent, the spectral steed. Upon his death, the spectral steed can be summoned again, but doing so drains the flask of crimson tears. Now this could be an overlook of translation, but it says death. So it's not that Torrent just disappears when he takes enough damage, but he is dying in a way and can come back all the same. This reads to me to fit with the ancestral spirits and how they occupy a murky space between life and death. I don't think there's anything more concrete to say about Torrent. Who his old master is seems to be up to preference of theory. You can let me know in the comments which one seems most plausible to you, or if you have another alternative. When it comes to the story of Torrent, we have said what we can. He made active choices about us and helping us on our path. Perhaps being a spirit beyond the Erd Tree, Torrent could see the issues with the Erd Tree and the Golden Order, and assisted us with the hope of ending the current order and replacing it with something different. Maybe he just wants everything to live outside of the order, somewhat similar to the ancestral spirits and the underground followers, or if he has an affinity for Rani, maybe that means he was aiming for something like her ending. We can't say for certain, but it seems clear that he has some sort of goal against the order or general setup. He's helping us take things down, basically. And I really think it would have been nice to get a bit more of development on Torrent, both as a character, since he does seem to be more than a mindless horse lore-wise, but also in gameplay. Having Torrent progress with us somehow, since we go through the whole game with him, would have really provided another avenue for reward for the player, and it could have made gameplay more fun. Have some slight armor adjustments for Torrent, maybe some skill developments like the third jump, or just more health or more speed, or more ability to do different attacks while on horseback, this would have kept Torrent as a more relevant part of the game all the way through, especially in something like the last boss fight, which really seems like it would have been a perfect fit for him to be in with us, the giant open area to run around with Torrent in. And I saw another comment about how he would be a good fit in the large open arena of the Ancestor Spirit and the Regal Ancestor as well. Those fights could have benefited from running around with Torrent too, and it would have painted a nice kind of dichotomous picture. Without any sort of progression for Torrent in this heavily progression-based RPG, it seems like a missed opportunity. So we have the setup for Torrent to be a bit more than just a means to an end of faster traversal and open world exploration, but it just wasn't followed through. Obviously I have my qualms, but nonetheless Torrent did prove to be more than originally meets the eye. And I really like how he is an avenue to learn more about quite a few aspects of the game, especially the Ancestor Spirits, some of my favorite character ideas in the Lands Between. With nothing much more to say about the lore of Torrent, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to subscribe for more lore, and I also have a Twitter linked in the description, so feel free to follow that too. Leave your comments and thoughts about the story and lore of Torrent, and thanks for watching. Bye.